So it's been a few months since the beta test of Bless Unleashed, and now the game has finally been fully released on Xbox One. I played the beta test as well as the stress test and decided to purchase the early founders pack to play the game a couple weeks early. The beta test I played was initially underwhelming, and at the time, I felt the game wasn't anything special, but I wanted to give it another shot when the game released. I mean, how could I forget a chest like this in game? Now that I've been playing the game for the past couple weeks, I have to admit it is a bit hard to put down ironically. Being able to play a fully in-depth MMORPG on my Xbox has finally given me a reason to actually play my Xbox every day now. But has everything been ironed out from my initial thoughts? about the game back when the beta test occurred. Looking at the marketing for this game, all the videos I saw make the game look amazing and has great art, and can probably be compared to an action RPG game like Dark Souls or Vindictus. So the question here is, is Bless Unleashed worth checking out now that it's been fully released to the public? Is it that next-gen MMORPG that Bandai Namco is advertising on their website? Let's talk about it, guys. Bless Unleashed is a sandbox-style MMORPG being exclusively released on the Xbox One for at least its first year. It may come to other consoles eventually, but for now, it is only Xbox. So... Alright everyone, so I'm going to be blunt here and say that the game hasn't really improved much, if at all, from the initial beta build that I played a couple months ago. How dare you? How dare you? Wait, 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 you, you didn't let me finish. It didn't really improve much in terms of optimization. Optimization like making sure the game runs smoothly, having NPCs and crafting stations not take literally minutes to pop up. The game basically begs to be played on an Xbox One X and nothing else. The game still stutters, has frequent crashes, connection issues, tons of server lag, but I can't put the damn game down. It has a ton of features within itself that could keep me playing for months on end, and I can see why a lot of people really do enjoy this game. So let's start breaking things down, shall we? Let's start with the game's story campaign. The story from what I currently experienced and could gather is that you as the player starts having a prophetic dream of essentially a coming apocalypse. From the dream, you find that you are blessed by the White Lantern, a blessing that allows you to more or less wield fragments from the gods within this world, as well as the prologue telling you to literally find the fragments of the gods. The story after the dream starts like any other game, where you are Joe Schmo, living in your daily life, until everything goes to crap and your adventure begins right so. The game allows you to play a prologue which will teach you about the basics of the game. Questing, combat, interacting with NPCs, shops, etc, etc. But obviously before then is character creation. Like the beta, there is currently five classes to choose from, all with very distinct and different playstyles. There is the Crusader, which is your standard sword and board damage or tanky warrior, the Berserker, which is a large axe wielding knight, the Ranger, which is the standard archer class, the Mage, and then finally the Priest. To complement the classes, there is also race choices. The races in Bless Unleashed is humans, elves, a dwarf-like squirrel race called the Ippin, and then a giant cat race called the Varg. Certain classes can only be played by certain races, unfortunately, which is a damn shame considering most MMORPGs that are popular right now allow you to pretty much play whatever you want with no restrictions, so I'm hoping this potentially changes in the future, especially since as far as I know within the context of the game, the races are more or less cosmetic choices. If your class has multiple races to choose from, there is no differences in the races, especially with stats, so it's basically just a choice from one or the other. Once you choose your class and race, you can then modify how your character looks. Bless Unleashed's character creator is quite extensive. You can change hairstyles, face styles, change body sliders, muscle, bust, height, weight, tons of choices are here for you to play with. You can also create a freak show of a character to play, which I've got to be honest, is really, really funny to see. I call this little girl Chicklet. Oh my God. 
Bless Unleashed gameplay sports some of the best things in the MMORPG genre. There is a large, vast open world to explore, world bosses to defeat that yield rewards, crafting and crafting professions that level up, reputation systems for the factions and cities within the game, talent trees within the union system, PvP, dungeons, raids, and just so much more. I'll try to talk about everything here, but I'm sure I'll miss something. Let's start with combat. Combat in Bless Unleashed is probably, unfortunately, one of its drawbacks, not because the combat isn't fun or anything, but because it's clunky, especially for specific classes. I play as the Crusader, and the game encourages you to try out all your combos and skills as you acquire them. The problem is that unless you are fighting trash mobs, most bosses aren't really going to let you wail on them, so for the most part, you aren't going to get to use a lot of those combos. It's just a shame because the combat has a lot of depth and difficulty to it. I just wish I wasn't constantly having to avoid tons of attacks from these bosses, or in some cases, just getting hit from attacks that had no business hitting me due to lag. Now it probably sounds like I just hate the difficulty of some of these encounters, but it's quite the opposite actually. My concern is that I can see it turning off others to the game. In my experience, how I learned to be effective in combat, I would need to turtle up with my shield to get in close, use a couple skills, maybe get off a combo, and then back off from the boss to get prepared again. Other classes like the mage, priest, and archer, however, tend to have an easier time killing things because they can just sit back and avoid most attacks, since they aren't within melee distance. Another problem that I had is the small stamina meter and how you can't really animation cancel to avoid danger. A lot of times you will be fighting a boss, having a great time, only to be locked into an animation and can't get out of the way, causing you to get hit. Now in some cases, I would argue this makes you think on your toes. You have to be careful how you choose to attack certain enemies, plan your attacks, use skills that you know you can dodge after using. But the thing is, is that I do wish that animations were faster, however, and that players could at least dodge one more time to help cancel out of attacks or get out of range of enemies easier. Once you get a hang of the combat and its many quirks, the real meat and potatoes of Bless Unleashed is all of the other features I mentioned before. Crafting is an important part of your journey in Bless because it's really how you make your character stronger past a certain point. Crafting is divided into five professions, alchemy for potions, and enchanting for cloth armor, shaping for leather armor and bows, forging for plate armor, swords, shields, axes, and totems, and finally cooking, which is used to obviously make meals. Finally, some good Alchemy can craft healing potions, temporary buffs, and dyes to dye your armor colors. Enchanting, shaping, and forging is really only helpful for their respective classes. For instance, as a crusader, enchanting and shaping doesn't really help me since none of the items I can craft can even be equipped by my character in those professions. Lastly, cooking, as I stated before, is used to cook meals, but the meals have some differences to potions. First, meals can only be consumed outside of combat and can offer some additional buffs. Buffs. Another use for meals is that they can be shared at the respawn points called soul pyres, which allow you to buff other party members or simply heal them. Gathering materials for crafting will usually have you going out and exploring the open world. The open world, like I said, is pretty vast and is separated into different zones depending on where you are in the story campaign. As you explore and level up, you will be playing through the campaign quests as well as many side quests that you will come across. World bosses are sprinkled in certain areas as well that spawn usually around every 10 minutes or so and will drop much needed materials that are used for crafting. The amount of stuff to do in these areas can seem overwhelming at first, but you'll start to unlock daily quests, reputation quests, daily dungeons, and eventually you will start to set goals for yourself to get a routine going, especially if you want to unlock certain mounts or styles. Once you get to a decent level, you also start experiencing the group instance content in the form of dungeons. The first couple you unlock is the Trials, which is a two-person arena-style boss fight, but eventually you will unlock proper five-man dungeons, PvP, and much more. Another style that Bless takes with its classes is that there really are no roles to perform in combat. The developers have stated this is to allow players to group up with any class makeup they want and still be able to play the content. This is actually a pretty neat approach in my book since it will speed up group matchmaking and allow you to just hop into content without complaining that the healer sucks. I need healing. Like other MMORPGs as well, there is a guild system in-game. Guilds are pretty easy to join since they
they have their own tab in the menu, and you can basically send an application to any guild you see, and request to the leader if you can join. Ironically though, that's about the extent of any community interaction in-game. Players don't really talk in in-game chat, since it's a pain to type out anything on the controller, and I would assume anyone who is talking is probably using a headset like most console players do. So even if chat seems dead, the game is actually pretty populated right now. The game's economy also works a little different in this game as well. The only way to trade is through the marketplace, and the only way to buy and sell in the marketplace is star seeds, which is a currency that you can earn a handful of times per day. Any gold you earn in the game is used for normal NPC shops, upgrading and enhancing gear, or to pay for menial tasks. Star seeds, besides being used in the marketplace, can also be used in some special shops, a secondary enhancing method if you don't have any gold, as well as many other things like reviving yourself on spot or teleporting around without having to be near a telepost. There is also a housing system in the game called Estates, but like most things in the game to experience, you have to unlock them first, and as someone who is a completionist, I tend to stick around in every area for hours to make sure I complete everything so I didn't make it to Estates yet. Lastly, let's talk about the game's cash shop. The cash shop in its current state is pretty harmless, with really the only things that may raise some eyebrows is the boosting items and convenience items. Things like extra XP boosts, crafting boosts, and inventory space come to mind, but none of that is necessary to enjoy the game. Ironically, you can even unlock more backspace by just playing the game, so honestly, the backspace you can buy in the cash shop is just icing on the cake. Another thing I like as well is some of the items you buy in the cash shop are actually tradable in the marketplace, so in some cases if you play enough, you can even earn premium items from the cash shop by simply purchasing them from other players. Bless also has a rewarding cash shop. Any money you spend on the game goes towards your prestige rank, which ranks up at a certain milestone and rewards you with various items. The items you do get are pretty lackluster until you spend quite a bit of money on the game honestly, but it is nice for those who do plan to spend potentially a good amount on the game over time. One last note about the cash shop is the Valor status. Valor status is basically Bless's membership, which runs about 12 bucks a month. If you are a member, you get 50 of the cash shop currency a day, 10% bonus experience, 10% bonus gold, and some other small things. Overall guys, Bless Unleash has a lot more potential than I initially thought. Like, there is still a lot to the game I haven't even covered, but I think it would be best for those who are interested to experience it for themselves. For those who don't want to wait for the free-to-play launch in a week, you can purchase a Founder Pack to get in early, but it's really up to you at this point. Let's get into my final thoughts. Bless Unleashed sports a plethora of content to experience in its launch window, having a lot of features that normally you wouldn't see on launch day. Things like a healthy amount of dungeons, campaign content, transmogging equipment with styles, crafting professions, achievements, achievements, titles, etc, etc. You'd be surprised at how a lot of MMORPGs launch essentially bare bones, but luckily, Bless Unleashed doesn't seem to be one of those games. When the game launches in a week, the game will be fully free to play. Whether or not that changes in the future, that is obviously yet to be seen, but it's good to see that Xbox can add another free MMORPG to their list. The art style and music of Unleashed is actually quite good. Many of the themes you will hear while playing will definitely give a sense of exploration and wonder. Other things like combat music changes depending on your area, and it gives an extra bit of detail that I like when playing games like this. The developers have taken note that Bless is not really a name people like to talk about in the MMORPG scape. So they have really spent a lot of efforts to try and speak to the community as much as possible, especially in game. Don't be surprised if you see a GM interacting with the community and hosting events to take part in. I'm hoping that energy lasts well into the game's life, because I would actually be sad to see another blessed title fail. Lastly, the game has a roadmap that you can check out on their website to give players things to get excited for. I can't stress enough that all of these live service games Games like MMOs need to do this to keep players around, so it's a positive that Bless does this. Oh, and before I forget as well, the developers have created a content creation program for the game similar to other games like Dauntless. If you create YouTube videos or stream on Twitch, they may take you onto their content creation program if you're playing Bless Unleashed. This is another step in the right direction to get players excited for the game, because not only is it good for their community, it's good and free advertisement for the game. Unfortunately, with all the positives I can give towards the game, one major flaw right now is combat stability. If you watch some of my clips during the video, 
you can see a lot of instances where I just kind of get hit randomly or something odd just happens during combat. This is probably just connection issues or server issues that may be ironed out in the future, but I do still think that combat animations for certain classes are a bit slow and have really high punishment windows. I think if some of these animations were sped up just a tad bit, it would lead to a much better experience without sacrificing some of its difficulty. While the game released with a lot of content and features, one aspect of the game feels like it's sorely lacking, which is character customization in classes. Five classes isn't a lot when compared to other MMOs on the market that sport well above 10 to 15, and the race restrictions on classes are just silly in 2020 in my opinion. I would love to see a lot more customization to characters and classes, but maybe that is something they have planned for the future. While I praise the art style and music, I can't say the same for the overall graphics of the game. A lot of textures are incredibly low detail, and to be honest, the player models in general look pretty bad, especially with the hair, which kinda leads into my next point. If you are playing this on a regular Xbox One, the game practically punishes you for not playing on an Xbox One X. I've played the game on an OG Xbox One and an Xbox One S, and both consoles have pretty poor performance. I'm talking low frame rates, tons of stuttering, disconnections are also pretty frequent. Everything I've seen when playing on an Xbox One X just plays better, which kinda sucks for those who may not want to completely replace their console so late in its life cycle, especially with the next console on its way soon. Also, if you haven't been paying attention, Bless Unleashed is an exclusive to the Xbox platform currently. It's pretty obvious that it's not going to stay exclusive, but most of these timed exclusive deals last about a year, so if you don't have an Xbox to play on, currently, you're pretty much out of luck until they release it on other platforms. Lastly, while I'm hopeful that the game is successful, Bless in name is basically a meme at this point. This would be the third attempt at a Bless MMORPG within the past couple years, so it's definitely going to have an uphill battle when it comes to community. As long as the developers stay true to their vision and deliver a fun, non-pay-to-win MMORPG, the game will be a hit. Let's just hope they don't fail a third time. Alright everyone, those are my thoughts on Bless Unleashed. Have you kept an eye on the game since its announcement? Have you wanted to try Bless Unleashed? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll respond to you. I literally respond to everyone in my comment section. As always, I want to thank all of you for watching, so if you liked my content, please give it a thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing to my channel. I truly appreciate all the support, guys. I also want to give a shout out to all my loyal supporters who comment on all of my videos. You guys and gals are amazing. The bee's knees, if you will. I have social media links down in the description too, like my Twitter and my Discord, so if you want to follow those, click those links. Anyways, that is all for this video, and I will see you next time.